Last weekend, we heard the story of temptation of Jesus Christ, how Jesus was tempted by the devil. And I remember preaching, I was like saying that I was surprised that devil was not scared of Jesus. Jesus was a holy person, was God, yet he was tested, he was tempted by the devil. Today we hear more about human temptation. We heard it's the story of how Abraham was tempted, was tested. His trust in God was completely tested. Why do I say this? We know that in the Bible, that God gave us 10 commandments. And in that very 10 commandments, he asked us not to kill. Thou shalt not kill. And today, the same God has asked Abraham to kill the son. And you'll be wondering, is God a God that contradicts himself? Why must he ask us not to kill? And at the same time, he has instructed Abraham to kill. Was that his intention? Was this really his intention that people should kill? It is not at all, because I know that God doesn't contradict himself. You and I believe that God is not a God of contradiction. He is always faithful to whatever he teaches us and in whatever he desires that we should incorporate into our life. One thing that is very clear in that very story of Abraham, how he was tested, how the temptation came to him, was that he was tempted with something he loved so much. He was tested with this, the, something of great value for him. His son, he was looking for a child. He was given a child. And then it's something of great value. That's the image of the scripture there. The image of the scripture is that you are going to be tested or tempted with something you value so much. It happened to Abraham. Abraham was tempted with something that he valued. It's not like God wanted him to kill because you can see it at the end of the, of the reading that God told him when, he, when God found out that he, he's, he's very faithful, that he was still very faithful, and he trusted him, he trusted God, God told him, do not harm that son. Do not harm that child. Do not do anything bad to him. That's to tell you that God never truly intended to allow anyone to kill anybody. Rather, he was trying to point out something of great value, something that you value somehow, something in your life. Those are the things that you will be tempted or tested. Devil will not test you with something you don't like. That's for sure. It's something that you desire, something that you love. That's what devil will come with so that you will like it. Just like the story of uh, uh, Adam and Eve, they were tempted, they were tested with, the, with the something, the fruit they liked. If they didn't like that fruit, they would not even try it at all. So that is exactly what happened to Abraham. Abraham loved his son, Isaac, and then God wanted to know whether he will be able to trust him. He will still have that trust and faith in him. Of course, Abraham showed it very well, and God immediately, already, God prepared the way. That's why he already made arrangements what would be used for the sacrifice. It wasn't even, God prepared it already. So, but he wanted to know how faithful this Abraham is to him. How would that, this Abraham can really trust him but we know that Abraham exhibited that very trust. We are encouraged as Christians, as Catholics, to trust God. To trust God. If you know how you trust your wife, if you know how you trust your husband, if you know how you place your trust in your beloved ones, your dad, your mother, whoever that is very important in your life, God is trying to remind us, use the same trust when you pray, when you ask him to give you something. Because if you trust your mother, 
you believe that your mother will give you this, immediately you ask for it. Even if he, he or she doesn't do it immediately, but she will make arrangements. If we have some, something like that, we have trusted people around us. God is trying to invite us to trust him, especially when we are offering our prayers to him, asking for something. He is ever faithful, and he doesn't desire that we should die. He doesn't desire the death of anyone. That's what he demonstrated in first reading today. He, Abraham you know, tapped into that, tapped into the love that God has for him, tapped into the very fact that God is a faithful God. And that was why when that commandment was given to him, he immediately wanted to do it. But God saw that he had that trust and told him, do not harm your son. Do not do anything. Now, look at this. Use this for your sacrifice. And then the gospel also has a great message for us. We heard that Jesus took the, his apostles, Peter, James, and John. He took them up to the high mountain. And on that very mountain, he transfigured himself. And these apostles, these followers of him, were so much amazed. They were so much uh, surprised at what happened. And immediately, they said, I mean, there was a, there was a voice from heaven that was saying that this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased listening to him. It was a special encounter. It was a special spiritual encounter between God and these apostles, these followers. And that was why they said immediately, Lord, let us build three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Why did they, why did they do that? Why do they have to request for building three tents? Because their experience was an exceptional experience. They had a wonderful encounter with God, and they did not want that image to go away in their life. It was a beautiful image. It was a beautiful encounter with God. It was a beautiful experience with God. And they felt like, how I wish this would remain with me. This kind of experience will remain with me. And in order to justify that or to demonstrate what they were feeling, they asked that three tents be built, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for, for him, so that they can always remember that, that very experience. My dear friends, I am sure in your life you probably have experienced God in a special way, that you feel like this is wonderful. Sometimes we encounter God even at Mass. When you come to Mass, sometimes you experience Him in such a way that you don't even look at your wristwatch, whether the homily is going longer or not, because you had a wonderful encounter at the Mass. It could be someone, maybe a friend, that made you to experience God in a special way. And because of that, you love that your friend. You don't want that your friend to go away any longer. It could be a preacher of God. It could be someone that presented a wonderful harmony to you, and you listened to it, you felt like, let this person become our pastor, because you, that person enabled you to immediately experience God. That was exactly what these apostles, these followers of Jesus Christ encountered. It was a wonderful encounter with God, and they asked Jesus, please, let us build three, three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, so that that experience will always be there, so that they will always remember it any time they come to that temple. Any time they come to that tent, they will be able to remember their special encounter with God. During this Lent, we are all called to return back to God. One of the major reasons why we are called to return back to God is for us to experience Him, to, have, to come closer to Him, so that we can have possibly the same experience that these apostles you know, had. I believe that if we pray for it and make every effort, even if we don't have the same experience, we will have similar experience. The point is that we are invited to have a transformational experience so that we will always relieve that very word, that very encounter with God. If you really and truly encounter God, you will understand what I'm saying. If you have really experienced God in a special way, you will know that you don't want that to go away. 
You want it to remain with you. And that's our prayer at this Mass, as we continue to pray and ask God to help us, first of all, to understand that temptation comes to us, and when that temptation comes, it comes with what we love. What we love is the thing that God, that God or even Satan, we use to tempt us. And at the same time, let us prepare our mind, our heart, our life in a way that we can you know, experience God in a special way so that we, that very experience will lead us through in our spiritual life. May the Lord continue to inspire us to come close to him and guide us in our spiritual life. Amen.